Hey, it's Mark with Mark's Virtual Real Estate Channel. I'm back with another Upland video, and today we're talking about Sparklet and the new Spark versus Sparklet crypto token trading thing that's happening. We're voting on it now in Upland, so I'll talk about what my opinion is of it and um, some concerns concerns I have with it and some good things that might come from it as well. All right, I um, actually did a full video on this the other day and my mic wasn't working, so that's why it's fun when you get to waste 20 minutes of your life, but <laughs> uh, make this video a little better, learn a little bit of things from that first video. Um, Upland is a virtual trading game. You can buy real estate, you can buy lots, you can rent properties, you can build properties, and that's kind of where Spark comes in. You also have cars and all kinds of other things going on, and Spark is supposed to help with those too. So, in Upland, you can buy the exact same lots as there are in real life. Uh, we have our Lazy Node down here in Neponza, which is a group of people that get together, build properties, and we have a Discord channel you can um, join below. Lots of fun. But, how Upland works is you have UPEX or UPX, which you can see I have a million one hundred sixty-eight thousand of right now, which is more than I've had in a long time. Maybe you'll have a city release soon, maybe not. It's been a while, but um, UPEX is used to buy properties, buy cars, buy legits, which are kind of NFTs um, for soccer and football and different things. Upland does. You also can earn UPEX from yield or rent or selling properties or selling cars or winning contests, things like that. So UPEX is kind of like the currency in Upland used to buy most things. Well, when you're building properties, you kind of use Spark to build properties. So I have a building right here that I'm working on and you can see it's gonna take me um, 31 days more to build it. I've got six Spark donated or, or um, you know, used to build this property. The more Spark you have, the more Spark you dedicate to a property, the faster it will be built. Other people can help you as well, so other people could donate their Spark to me as well. We do that with our Upland contest, um, a lazy node contest to help people build properties faster. So that's one way Spark is utilized right now. And it looks kind of crooked, but it's actually straight with this line. Maybe it should have been straight with that line. I don't know, but that's okay. So um, you can see we've built lots and lots of buildings in the ponds, and a lot of it thanks to our contest we've done and thanks to Spark. And so Spark right now can't be sold. Once you've got it, you can't get rid of it. You can rent it out to people and they can use it, but you can't sell it. So if you have Spark, you're keeping it for life, pretty much. That's how it works. Upix, you can um, buy things, you can sell things, and you can sell your properties for dollars too, like US dollars. That's how you can take your money back out of the game. So you can buy Upix with dollars right here. I can pay $5 to get 5,000 Upix. Um, there's a special, oh, there's still a, packs going on there anyway but when you you can't sell upix for dollars so it's just kind of a one-way exchange in that sense you can buy properties with upix and then sell those properties for dollars but you're not getting a five thousand to five dollar exchange rate there you're probably getting a five thousand to two dollar and fifty cent exchange rate or three dollar exchange rate there so um, it's definitely more advantageous to buy properties with your upix than to buy upix with dollars that's for sure okay so what is upland changing well they're creating sparklet and they're having a white paper vote, which is open right now. I should have done this video sooner, but I'm lazy, and that's why I started the lazy note. So um, basically, Sparklet is a new um, token that will be one one thousandth of um, Spark. So one Spark equals a thousand Sparklet, and they want to be able to trade that Sparklet on exchanges, or people can trade, you know, them between wallets. So it makes it possible to sell your Spark now. So you can exchange Spark in Upland for Sparklets and then go and sell those Sparklets. Um, let's see here. We're going to go through their white paper, but uh, that's probably the best way to go through most of this. Now, I'm not going to go through this whole thing and read this whole thing. I've read through it. A draft. It's not a draft. I thought this was the official white paper. Anyway. <laughs> um, all right. We're going to skip through most of this. Uh, we've talked about Spark. They want to also make it so cars can drive to places using Spark. And they've got some other things they want to have more utility for Spark. Here's utility and demand. Um, it requires Spark to um, build their properties. Coming in 2024, players will also use Spark to charge their virtual vehicles for means of travel. They've been promising that for a long time. We'll see how that works. 
Upland entrepreneurs and creators require Spark to build shops, factories, showrooms. Um, I have a shop too. It mostly loses money. It's not that amazing, but that's okay. I'm sure other people do much better. And I'm glad they have shops. I'm glad they have that option, but it's weird how they charge us fees um, to use those shops. And I've talked about that before. Third party developers require Spark to, a special, to establish map presence via development shops. Um, I think that's kind of like Kingdoms, where you have a game on top of Upland, and they need Spark to develop that. And then partners and brands need Spark um, to create virtual assets that could be offered to players to purchase during events and things like that. So that's what you use Spark for now. Um, constructing and building buildings, manufacturing goods take Spark, and you can rent Spark like we talked about. Spark statistics. They're talking about how um, 130,000 players hold Spark and it keeps going up. Well, you can't really sell Spark. So I don't know. It actually is showing, you know, up and down amounts. Or this might be, is this how many? Uh, Spark staked. Okay, so that's an amount of Spark staked. But um, the amount of people who have Spark is always going to go up because you can't sell it <laughs> until now. So, well, not yet, but maybe. So this shows the amount of, of Spark staked about, what is that, 7,000 or so? Maybe 6,500 um, Spark is staked um, to build stuff, do things. And that's important to know because we'll show you some numbers here. Um, Spark Roadmap, Roadmap, as we said, they want to use it to for transportation, racing, um, create legits, Enhancing manufacturing, maximizing Upex earnings potential. Potential. This is an interesting one. Players who own properties in Upland enjoy Upex earnings that may be amplified by completing property collections. In the future, new mechanics may be introduced where players need to meet certain property development thresholds, which require the use of Spark to achieve in order to realize the full potential of these earnings. So a lot of us have said for many, many months and even years, hey, Building should have some utility besides having a shop in it that loses money. Sorry, not everybody loses money, but there needs to be a reason to build buildings. And that's what Spark is for. The main use of Spark is to build buildings, but there's no use for buildings, so what's the point? Well, instead of giving us you know, more yield or more earnings for having buildings, they're basically gonna take away your bonus unless you have a building, it sounds like, or something else on there. So instead of giving us more, they're taking away unless we have a building. I mean, at least it has some utility, but it'd be nice if they give us bonuses and give you an incentive to have it, not exactly trying to take away your incentive of a collection. But again, I don't own Upland. I don't make all the rules, so that's okay. Um, Upland will introduce the ability for developers to ask their users to spend or stake Spark within their offerings. Okay, future utility Spark will remain a key resource in all inanimate objects and tasks. That require energy input as the Upland ecosystem grows and evolves with new features together with the growth and expansion of Upland's developer network. Spark will continue to be utilized in new ways. So they're saying it will have more future utility. They just don't know what it is yet. Um, sparklet and Spark. Like I said, one one thousandth of a Spark is a, a, a Sparklet. They only exist on Ethereum where Spark tokens only exist in Upland. So you can trade your Spark in Upland for a Sparklet and then I think there's a burn fee to do that probably, and it says, well, Sparklet tokens may be uploaded from Ethereum to Upland with a minimum requirement of 10 Sparklet per reclaim transaction. Minimum of 10, we don't know if there's, you know, that's 10 per 100 or 10 per 1000, if that goes up, but there's gonna be costs to do that, just like any crypto or coin or token. When you convert them from Ethereum or, or sell them, there's always a, a burn fee to do that. There's probably gonna be a burn fee in Upland to change Spark to Sparklet. It wouldn't surprise me if it's 5%, which is what they do with pretty much all of their transactions in Upland. We'll see how that all works. Maybe not. Maybe they'll surprise me and won't do it. But it's not going to be you know, free to exchange your Spark, that's for sure. Uh, token supply, there'll be a minimum of 1 billion Sparklet tokens will be issued on Ethereum. These tokens will be mirrored by 1 million Spark that will be minted in Upland. As we just said, there are about 6,000 Spark staked right now. And they're going to have a million Spark at some point. Um... That's a lot. Those are those are big numbers. So we'll see how that all works. Uh, sparklet in circulation. Um, spark in circulation is defined as the total amount of liquid spark owned by Ethereum accounts, plus the total amount of sparklet in escrow on the Ethereum bridge. Okay. Um, Upland Treasury. Upland will have sparklet tokens vest to this account to be used for the purpose of supporting the continued maintenance, operations, and growth of the Upland platform. 
as well as other causes it deems as beneficial for the upland ecosystem potential path for full decentralization of upland that's important the upland community represented by a DAO or other form of system of governance will obtain authority over this pool at some point in the future someone else will have authority incentive and awards um, they'll give awards and incentives to contests for people to have spark and sparklet token grants for adopting communities games platforms and brands this is the third party you know they will have a lots of use for spark and sparklet advisors and supporters they'll be giving spark and sparklet to existing upland owners of course will have some and liquidity sparklet in this account will be used for liquidity purposes by market makers to support the trading of sparklet tokens so if you want to buy more sparklet sell some they have a liquidity account so here's the distribution of the summary um, and and locked at TTE. I think that's uh, when they do their, if the vote passes, when they start all this, you'll have 2.3% of Spark unlocked in Upland Treasury. None for those guys yet. Existing Upland owners, 5.7%. Liquidity, 3% for a total of 11%. That'd be 110,000 Spark unlocked where we have 6,000 staked right now if I'm reading that right if I'm wrong let me know it's a massive increase in spark and this is an interesting graph right here too this bottom is hard to see I know is spark holders and it, it stays pretty steady I don't know if they're gonna sell spark anymore have spark week anymore I, I've heard maybe one more and then it's probably done that's where you can become uplander you know change your status get more spark um, buy spark etc i think the cost is at 460 or 560 per spark now i expect that to drop a bunch we'll see um your treasury is going to have a massive increase in spark liquidity will be about the same this is starting in 2023 11 2023 is when they plan to do this that quick that'll be interesting um so you're going to start out with a bunch of liquid a bunch in the treasury and then they're going to have way more given to ecosystems and grants way more given to incentives and rewards and way more given to advisors so all of those guys are going to have way more than actual spark owners in the game at some point which is interesting because i think the spark owners in upland just me should probably be the biggest stakeholders but um it's not looking like that will be the plan at all other people will have way more spark um sustainable vesting this is also also an important part Anticipated demand for Spark is poised to surge within the Upland community. Maybe, I don't know, with that much Spark available, is demand going to surge? Maybe some demand, but supply is going to be way up here. Um, Align closely with the increasing number of daily participants in Upland's activities and the ongoing introduction of further applications for Spark. Due to the dynamic nature of the trajectory curve of this evolving ecosystem, the concept of sustainable vesting schedules takes center stage in this white paper. This pioneering vesting framework introduces a dynamic approach that factors in both the Upland treasury and the incentive and rewards token allocations. In a scenario of zero growth from the time of the TTE, both allocations will vest over a 30-year period. Simultaneously, as specific growth milestones are achieved, the vesting schedule will compress, facilitating the release of a higher volume of tokens each month. The yardstick for growth will be the average count of daily active wallets within the Upland ecosystem assessed over monthly intervals. Wallet count will exclude sparklet token holders on Ethereum. Notably, once a growth milestone is attained, it becomes a permanent accomplishment impervious to any fluctuations that might temporarily occur beyond the time of achievement. Um, this is confusing, but the, basically they're saying we want 30 years to get all the spark out if there's a zero growth um, Scenario, whatever that means. I guess that's in, in Spark holders. I don't know. Um, here are your vesting milestones, which I don't understand exactly what that means. Kind of like I don't understand how the shop fees are calculated because they don't really publish all that information. But if there's average DAW achieved for the month, it's 40,300, 150. But if it goes up, there's less vesting. I don't know. Anyway. Um, the authority responsible for potential contraction of the vesting schedules when growth milestones are hit will be delegated to an independent third party that will be a necessary multi-signatory for the change to the vesting schedules. Typo, that's okay, I do those two. Uh, managing accumulated spent Spark. Spark is spent inside of Upland for the purpose of creating legit. So NFTs will be transferred to an accumulated an accumulated and dedicated account and period of cadence that will be determined in the future. Upland team will work with the community to form a proposal and recommendation about what should be done with the accumulated spent Spark um, have it burn, transfer to other grants or incentive allocations, or a mix thereof. So they don't, there's going to be a bunch of more Spark spent. They don't know what they're going to do with it. They'll figure that out later. Updating token parameters in the future. This white paper serves as a foundation, um, blah, blah, blah. 
they might change things divergent scenarios might yeah so anyway i want to that wasn't the exact thing um okay you have to be at uplander status to um get ethereum and you have to metamask be in good standing you can't be an alcatraz to do this exchange stuff um, yada yada yada. You have to know your option. You know, know your user requirements. The KYC, whatever that is. Um, oh, that's if you're reclaiming Spark. So, if Spark is earned or purchased in Upland, the amount of Spark being reclaimed must be less than or equal to the amount of Spark that has been staked in Upland. For a minimum of 720 Spark hours for each one Spark. In the three months previous to the past 30 days at the time of reclaim, this constraint does not... So if you have Spark and Upland that you didn't buy from Ethereum and upload, they have some pretty big limitations on if you can sell it. So, um, player has sufficient upics to pay for gas fees associated with the reclaim. Of course, there'll be fees to do that. So that could stop some massive sell-offs, I guess, we'll talk about in just a second. Um, boy. 48 hour cooldown for transfer to execution even though the bridges follow the tightest security protocols and are subject to private audits audits this serves as a final layer of defense where any potential vulnerability might be discovered <sighs> that's a long time all right there would be upland may conduct programmatic sales through centralized or decentralized exchanges that will not exceed two percent of the global sparklet trading volume so upland can sell sparklet as long as it's not 2% of the total volume. Upland may sell Spark inside of Upland at the current market price as made public through exchanges that trade Sparklet. Okay. Well, they can also offer a certain amount of Sparks to carry a discount compared to market price where they're required to be staked for a certain amount of time. Okay. You can still win Spark. Um, keeping the economy protected. Uh, this is an interesting one. Having Spark tradable in the form of Sparklet may bring macroeconomic effects that need to be considered. For example, in a favorable macroeconomic environment, Sparklet market prices may fluctuate up, making it less accessible for Uplanders. For that reason, Upland Inc. maintains the authority to tweak Spark-related economic parameters within Upland in reaction to macroeconomic conditions such as, but not limited to, the amount of Spark hours for construction of, partic of particular structures, the amount of Spark hours hours required for manufacturing, the amount of spark required to create legit NFTs, the amount of spark hours required to charge a particular vehicle. So basically they're saying they have the authority to change all of those things based on if they think the price of spark is too high or too low. Remember how I said this is supposed to be a way to decentralize Upland. This is a way to uncentralize <laughs> Upland and give them more power to change things and manipulate currency. Is that a bad thing? I don't know. I think this whole idea that Upland is going to be decentralized is silly. It's a game that people have to have city releases and have um, contests and do different things. How can it ever be decentralized? I don't know how it can be decentralized. I think this idea that it needs to be decentralized, I don't know how that's ever going to happen. Um, I think it's fine that it's not decentralized, but to pretend it's being decentralized and then have stuff in this proposal that make it less decentralized uh, is a little bit concerning to me. All right, legal compliance and disclaimers. This is important too, because it basically says their lawyers say, this isn't a security, it won't be regulated by the SEC because of some other um, case rulings and judge rulings. And if that's true, great, but it's also a concern for people because cases, judges can change their minds, the laws can change. If this becomes a uh, security under SEC or um, the US government looks at it more strict, it could be huge restrictions or issues or problems. Upland could get sued. Who knows what happens? It brings in a lot of unknowns by doing this. Will that happen? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an expert on that side of it. It brings in more possibilities it could happen, but we'll see. So one concern too is, oh, it's 460 per spark. That's right. Okay, right there. Anyway, um, I used to be um, in Steam and Steam it and... Um, I still am, but I don't ever go there. I haven't been there for years. That was a site where you could um, have blogs, and you got paid for blogs. And um, I actually did quite well on my um, – got up to a 70 
rating, which was really good. I had 1,100 followers, and you can see the last time anything happened was last year. It's been a very long time. So I built up Steam it and um, Steam Dollars. They had Steam it, Steam Dollars. You could exchange them within Steam it. Then you could sell both of them on exchanges, actually. Well, the tricky part was very few exchanges traded those currencies or tokens. You had to go to a very small, um, you know, a trader like Binance or Coinbase did not have them. You had to go to a very small um, exchange, buy it there, sell it there. Then you had to transfer that into XRP or something else with a small gas burn, whatever. I forgot what I used. And then transfer that to another bigger um, wallet. Then you had all this XRP. If you wanted to take that and make it dollars, you had to trade that for dollars, take that out. You know, every step along the way, your burden fees, your paying fees, you're taking time to transfer stuff. And it was doable, but it was pretty complicated trying to figure all of that out. Will that happen with Upland and Spark and Sparklets? I don't know, but I don't know if it's gonna be big enough or even considered like a tradable currency um, for these exchanges to use. Maybe it will be, maybe it won't be. So I don't know how, what their plan is to get them on those exchanges. If they've talked to those exchanges, they've figured out how we're actually going to trade sparklets because that could be a concern, um, especially for people in the US where a lot of these exchanges aren't operating anymore because of the US government laws, things like that. Will we even have access to trade these or will we have to go through step by step by step by step and trading and exchanging all this stuff or will it have to be just private transactions through people wallet to wallet, which um, can be a little bit risky and confusing getting all those keys and everything and how that's going to be set up and all that's done so there's a lot of concerns and things about that how all that will work for me um, i didn't see anything addressing that in the white paper now i know uplands had um, reddit and videos and different stuff i don't have time to watch all those or read all those maybe they covered it in those if, if they did let me know I'd, I'd like to hear what their opinions are there but those are my concerns so with this vote I don't know what I'm going to vote. I don't even know if I will vote. Um, I think it's going to pass no matter what, whatever I do. I think if Upland has a vote and they promote and, you know, try and get people to vote for something like this as hard as they have, people are going to vote for it and they're going to vote yes. Uh, my concerns are the spark value could just sink significantly because people now have a chance to sell their spark. You know, a lot of people who haven't been in the game for a long time have sold most of their properties and different stuff and cashed out, but they still have a bunch of Spark they couldn't sell. Now they could go back in there and sell their Spark. Now with their whole limits on how much Spark you can sell versus how many hours staked in the past three months or whatever that was, that could limit them from just doing a fire sale right away, but they might be able to go in, buy a property or two, build a building, stake their Spark, and then in three months, they can um, sell their Spark at that point. So maybe it won't be a significant drop right in the beginning, but it could be because there will be some people who want to cash out who have staked their spark. After all, why not stake your spark if you've got it? And then for people who haven't staked their spark in a couple of months, there could be another significant drop when they come and try and sell all their spark as well. And you've got lots of other ways that Upland wants to introduce more and more spark. And the more supply goes up, the lower prices go down. So then will Upland decide to, well, we've got to make spark way more um, expensive or in or, or or you need much more spark to build properties so then they increase all the hours it takes to build stuff to charge cars to do things like that to try and bring demand back up and now people are having to buy all this spark to get to where they were people who spent money on spark before saw their investment decrease a lot that's kind of how i envision this going is it bad is it worth it to be able to sell spark maybe not maybe it's still worth it to do this but i don't see it as this you know magic thing where spark stays up high and we can all sell our spark for a bunch of money if we want i think it's going to drop a bunch and the introduction of selling spark will give us more ways to cash out but that cash out um, for the value we put in is probably going to be much lower than um, what we would hope for at least that's my initial thoughts all right love to hear what you think love to hear um what do you think of this idea? I still would love for Upland to focus more on building and giving us utility there and ways to make money and improve properties. And there's so many different things. We can have a property dashboard that actually shows what properties we own and are easy to find and locate. Would be amazing. So if they'd focus on that stuff and make the game better, I think it would bring more people in and bring up demand for Spark and Upix and different things. But um, it's kind of like they keep doing these other things and not all the way 
um, fulfilling them, and then they start another thing, and that's been an ongoing story with Upland. We'll see if that keeps going that way. All right, <laughs> be back soon. We'll have more videos, more contests for our Lazy Note 2. Let me know what you think.